Hello, welcome to Africa. Let's talk. My name is Collins Kofi Opon. You can always call me Mr. Beyond. And of course, tonight I would like to say happy, happy International Women's Day to every woman watching us and of course all women all over the world. Uh, we are having a conversation on Africa. Let's talk. And the topic is embracing equity to forge women's empowerment. Even as we celebrate today, uh, women's achievements, uh, raising awareness indeed about discrimination, as well as taking action to drive gender uh, parity. During the program, we will also share some light on an incredible book, which is actually titled Leading with Cultural Humility. Uh, that we find very appropriate, especially on the issue of equity. The last parts of our conversation will also dwell on the highly talked about inaugural entrepreneurship and leadership conference. If you haven't heard about it, then I'm talking about it today. It's called the inaugural entrepreneurship and leadership conference. Uh, so if you have thoughts about starting a business or you are growing your business to create the highest impact and income, then you have to attend the conference that we'll also be talking about in the course of the program to learn from six and seven figure entrepreneurs. So yes, that is also about one part of the program that is coming up. But for now, please, wherever you are, help me welcome our guest today as we discuss embracing equity to forge women's empowerment. My guest today is Lina Nyamwaya. Uh, she's an author, an education DEI consultant, as well as leadership coach and an award-winning uh, registered nurse. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome <laughs> Lena. How are you? Hi, Collins. Thank you for having me, Mr. Beyond. I like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You are very welcome and we are glad to have you. Today is International Women's Day and I would like to say happy, happy International Women's Day. Thank you so much. Yes, we appreciate that. There's so many people all over the world to celebrate. So happy International Women's Day to the mothers, grandmothers, aunties, sisters, cousins everywhere all over the world. All over the world, indeed, we are having an amazing time. So please, if you join the conversation, like I said, you are more than welcome to join us. And of course, uh, your questions are welcome. And as we talk about this very important topic, like I mentioned earlier, our conversation is indeed about embracing equity uh, to forge uh, women's empowerment. The first thing I would like to know or to ask of you is that you have an inspiring and unique story since you actually migrated to the United States of America. Can you share a bit about your background and your journey thus far? Thank you. I was born and raised in Kenya, uh, which is in East Africa. It's a British colony. So we spoke English. But 26 years ago this year, I migrated to the United States as an international student. So those days wow. we used to get an F1 visa. So I came here to do electrical engineering. Collins, you're going to laugh. So I don't know wow. how, but things happened. I only came with $68 in my pocket. My mom was a teacher. That's the best she could do. And I don't think people back home are aware how expensive educational healthcare is in America. So $68 was a lot, mm. but that's all I had. So I technically landed with nothing. Uh, one briefcase, $68 and a backpack. But mm. years later, I have been able and blessed to go. I went from, I like to say, I went from a local, my first job was actually as a laundry woman or a laundry, laundry lady in a nursing home. Mm. Then I admired CNA. So I asked the girls there, like, how do you become one? So then, of course, through that conversation, I became an, a nursing assistant in Illinois. They used to call it a nurse's aide. And then I wow. went on to become a registered nurse's aide when you take that district or state exam. Then I became an LPN and then I became an RN and then I went back and became a BSN, which is a Bachelor of Nursing, of, of Science Nursing. I did go back for a doctorate, but I withdrew and did a Master's of Education Leadership instead. And yeah, thank mm -hmm. you for having me now. I'm an author. So I'm here with you, Collins. 
Wow, you have an amazing and inspiring story. And of course, what a time to really have this conversation, especially as we celebrate International Women's Day. And of course, uh, the campaign uh, for this year says Embrace Equity. Uh, can you actually share uh, some insights on this theme and how relevant is this theme in our world today? So uh, women rule the world literally, indirectly or directly. Um, as mm. most of you know that whether you like it or not, everybody came out of a woman. And that's always exciting to talk about, but it's an honor as well. As a mother, as someone who knows that I respect my grandmother and miss her terribly, she passed away in 2009. I know the mm. power of a strong African woman. So I like to say gender in inequities or gender inequalities have been here for centuries. Uh, my grandmother growing up, she was raised with, she had brothers and it was the time of colonization. Obviously you and I were born free, but our grandparents were born colonized. Mm -hmm. um, so she grew up with her brothers and with the colonialists introducing formal education in Kenya, the British curriculum. The brothers were allowed to go to class, but she was married off as a fifth wife. But through that wow. arrangement, my grandmother was so, um, I like to say determined, but also she was listening as a little girl. She was able to actually run away from that home that night, even though the dowry was paid and she ran mm. to her stepmother's house. And that's a long story. I share that in my book. But I wanted to say that from that resilience of running away and knowing that she was, she wanted also to learn with her brothers, she broke that curse of, or she broke that custom or habit of being married off young. So she was wow. later allowed, by, she persuaded her father and later allowed to go to school. And that's how she later met my grandfather. And I'm a product of her fourth child because she had 12. Wow. When did I share that? You asked me about equity, embracing equity. Mm -hmm. Inequalities have been here, as you can imagine. You hear boys being sent to school, girls being mm -hmm. married off. Uh, you know very well that back home, most African cultures, the men inherit the wealth. The women are married off somewhere. Um, if you come to the United States, you and I have heard about the noise about women being housewives, the pay scale being less than, uh, women not having opportunities at workplaces, leadership opportunities missing. And I think the message from the International World Day today is embracing equities, recognizing that people start different at different places. However, we must level the playing field. So by recognizing that everybody's needs are different, but then um, there's a way we can meet those needs if we listen and offer support as needed by each person. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so very much for throwing light on the theme for this year's International Women's Day. Once again, this is African Let's Talk. We're talking about embracing equity to forge a women's empowerment. My guest today is Lena, uh, Lena Nyamwaya. She's actually an author and a leadership coach, as well as an award winning uh, RN. Uh, she has some amazing things up her sleeves. So please, uh, if you want to hear more, I encourage you to share the video, invite your friends. We are also streaming live on YouTube, on African Let's Talk, as well as oh. on LinkedIn. So you can also watch us on these uh, other platforms. But for now, share wherever you are you, that you may be watching from. And of course, Alina, the next thing we'd like to find out from you uh, is about what I call um, uh, the in your assessment, actually, as women's leader. Uh, do you think that the world indeed celebrates the achievement of women enough. Even now that we, there, is, there is some improvement, but you feel as a woman uh, with all that you do, everything that is up your, your, your umbrella uh, or under your umbrella, do you feel that the world celebrates women enough? I would say that there has been some progress. Clearly you and I listening to our grandparents share their stories. We can say that we were born at better times. So the hope is that the world is always better for the next generation. And that's why we are doing this so that our children have a better, more equitable world. Now, does the world celebrate women enough? I would say they can do better. They can do better, especially within the African community, whether North, the Southwest or East, or even in America where we live, you and I live today. I think we can do better. We can do better by what I mean by that. First of all, let me just go back and define or actually break down the difference between equality and equity. But uh, mm -hmm. I think we can do better. 
if you think about trying to be equal, a lot of people say, oh, we want to focus on equality. Let's just, you know, everybody gets the same. So that means like, and, and I think you and I have had this conversation before, where mm -hmm. what is equality? Equality is like if, we, if somebody walked up on me and you today, they just hand you one, um, let me say one pair of shoes, size five, and you get mm -hmm. size five, one pair of shoes. They don't care to ask if what size you wear. We both get size five pair of shoes. And we and they keep stepping stepping now it, equity would be different it would be to mm -hmm. make sure that you know what collins wears what size of shoe they wear and in fact do they have feet mm -hmm. or do they even can they wear shoes or maybe they're handicapped or something so mm. i think that is the part that a lot of people forget that equity is really recognizing that there is different and people are different. But I throw a little a twist to that with cultural humility. Cultural humility is where mm -hmm. you stop and then ask, hey, Mr. Beyond, I have shoes here. Would you like some shoes? And if you did, what is your size? Mm -hmm. Or, hey, Lena, would you prefer shoes or would you want to have sandals or something like that? But it's really mm -hmm. just offering people an opportunity to share and their preferences so that you can meet their needs that serve them. Because think about it. If you had someone who had amputated legs or feet and you just handed them a pair of size five shoes, what are they going to do? Mm -hmm. with it? Mm. So that is equity for you. I wanted to make sure that. But going back to what you asked me in the world today, I think it's recognizing that women have... Women are not a monolith, number one. We are not the same everywhere. And then recognize mm -hmm. that we all have different needs. A woman who's in leadership, looking to advance in a promotional career, has different needs from a woman who's in entrepreneurship now, like myself, looking for opportunities mm -hmm. for business or network or other things. So recognizing that people have different needs. Or a woman who's a girl child in the village back home who has no sanitary towels to go to school. So they are missing on opportunities when the boys are continuing to go to school. So there are so many different things that we can do to celebrate mm. women, but also by meeting their needs. Well, that's amazing indeed. They said that the biggest room in the whole world is the room for improvement. So Amen. men in the world, yes, sir. We, we, can, <laughs> we can certainly do better indeed, celebrating women and of course, pay more attention. And I'm excited that you took time to really explain equity and of course equality uh, for us to understand if you join the conversation of any questions for my guests today so please you are more than welcome to leave your question in the comments box and we'll be able to access for you uh, at the right time of course at this moment what we'd like to find out um, is about um, as we forge ahead with women empowerment i mean some progress but there's still work to do what uh, are the impacts and opportunities that you believe the world will experience when women are fully empowered? Are there things we are missing out just because we are not empowering women and girls enough? 100%. Um, I, I think you and I grew up again, once again, I think we can be biased by saying that we love African proverbs. And it was just mm -hmm. a big message in a very one liner. So you had to kind of dig deep to understand and you know that I love African proverbs because one word is enough for a wise person. So you ask, mm -hmm. what is it that we can do? I believe that number one, if women are allowed to shine in their power without being diminished or being squashed or suffocated, that's the great opportunity of like where they say, um, you know, if you if you teach a man or a boy, you teach one person. But when you teach mm -hmm. a girl or allow a girl to be educated and get opportunities, you educate the village or the whole community. It's basically the same thing even in America or even in the Western world, if you look at it. Think about COVID-19. When COVID-19 mm -hmm. broke, Germany, the, the country, the, the country was amazingly doing well. And actually other countries had to borrow resources from there. And guess who was leading? Chancellor Merkel. Angela Merkel. Now, yes. when you look at what happened recently, the same thing in New Zealand before the prime minister re resigned, she was doing amazingly well. The crime rate is low. The, the education is doing great. And she did, a, it was a woman once again. And I think if you look at even just in the United States, different departments or different things being led by women, uh, look at the CEOs mm -hmm. of different companies, even though they are not many, it's a minute uh, portion of women doing it, but they are doing amazingly well. 
And often there's this uh, bias or disclaimer that people think, oh, women can do that or they have to do this and they have to do that. And that's just an unconscious bias that is there because honestly, when that those companies are being led, they're doing great numbers and production. So what can we do, I think, to do better is to recognize that women are just as capable or sometimes even better than men mm. and then allowing them to serve in their passion and whatever it is that they, they are calling so that that way they can uh, perform well. I'm a, I'm a perfect example. I'll tell you that I learned a few years ago not to be in a box. It was easy for me mm. to function as an RN. I was at the bedside. I was doing great. I was in a nursing home. And then I went to the hospital and I realized, wait a minute, I love to lead. So why can't I be a leader in this space? Nobody came to tap me and say, hey, Lena, hey, Collins, there's an opportunity here for you to apply. No, I saw it. I knew I was ready. I applied mm -hmm. and I qualified for it. Um, it's easy to be um, question yourself. Sometimes they call it imposter syndrome or self-doubt. Mm -hmm. But no, I think women can do well. And especially if I can speak to immigrant women in America. Mm -hmm. We need to seize opportunities that are there because nobody's going to hand it to you. You got to go out there and seek it. Just prepare, get your education, get your resources, get your business going, and then go seek it. Sometimes you just have to knock, like the Bible says, and that door will open. Well, that's amazing. Sometimes you just have to knock, and indeed, that's the door. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're still talking about embracing equity to forge women's empowerment. Then there's more coming up on the program because we're going to be talking about the book, the new book that is making waves everywhere, uh, written by Lena. Uh, indeed, uh, it's, it's amazing. You have to learn about this book, and we're also going to be talking about the entrepreneurship uh, conference that is coming up. We're taking a quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue the conversation once again with Lena and yeah, Maya. I'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Africa. Let's talk. My name is Colin Scofiopo. You can call me Mr. Beyond. Tonight, we are talking about embracing equity to forge women's empowerment. And indeed, we are having such an amazing conversation with Lena, uh, who is right here with us. Actually, even as we talk about this all important topic. And guess what? Today, we're celebrating International Women's Day. So yeah, it's very apt. And guess what? We have amazing conversations coming up. Of course, Lena, at this point, what we would like to talk about um, is uh, whilst we celebrate uh, the 2023 International Women's Day and learning of how we can all embrace equity. And thanks so much earlier on, you explained uh, the difference between equity and equality. I, I cannot help but also notice how your first book, which is Leading with Cultural Humility, actually sinks in very well with the issue of equity. Uh, can you, inf can you tell us actually what inspired you to write this book? Yes. So thank you again for having me. And uh, yes, I wrote, a, I became a published author in 2022, November. So yes, I'm excited. My book is everywhere on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Ingram, anywhere where Ingram Spark um, supplies books. So Nook, and that's exciting to be. Um, I was actually like, whoa, pinch me. I've been working on this for a while. My book, <laughs> Leading in Culture Humility. I think I got mm -hmm. introduced to cultural humility a few years back by my mentor. I was mm. always, you know, all of us, you and I have been trained in the space of cultural competency or cultural sensitivity or cultural intelligence mm -hmm. or cultural awareness, cultural diversity. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's all great. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what happened. We were having lunch and this is when my grandmother was still in the United States. We were having lunch and with my mentor and I was explaining to her how we are taking grandma to church here locally in the Twin Cities and grandma mm -hmm. noticed uh, a little girl with braces on her teeth 
And mm -hmm. so grandma was like, who, where do they do that? I said, grandma, those are called braces. She said, why do they put metals on their children's teeth? I said, grandma, they have to sleep with them. They're supposed to help straighten their teeth. I said, she mm -hmm. said, which woman would do that to their child? That's torturing the child. Mm -hmm. And so I said, grandma, they have to wear that for years. They sleep with them. They wake up with them. They're going to straighten their teeth so they can look good. And now when I told that to my um, mentor, who happened to be my professor at the time, she goes, huh, you know, when I went to Africa sometime back, we did missions to Haiti as well. I noticed that the Maasai wear those um, things around their necks or their ears. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. that's ought to be painful. That looks painful. Mm -hmm. and, and, and she said, it's easy when it's not your culture for ethnocentrism to kick in. Like your culture seems much better than everybody else's because mm -hmm. you, your world, your view, your attributions, everything you look at, you look at it from your world and your exposure, what you're comfortable mm -hmm. with. Everything that is different from what you're used to often throws you either in culture shock or that space of like, whoa, that is not good. That's when bias kicks mm -hmm. in. But shock is like when you and I came to the States and we are like, you mean everywhere I have to go in a car and everywhere I have to do this? Like, <laughs> like what did they say? Like, they just questioned my accent and I was getting A's in British English in Kenya and Ghana. Like, what are they talking about? Mm -hmm. So all those right. are like culture shock experiences that we went through. However, culture, culture humility then kicks in when you recognize that everybody's culture is good enough for them. The only thing mm. you have to know is recognize that you're going to go through culture shock. But instead of assuming that this is what this person is doing, find out from them, what does that mean? How can I help you? Or how best can we work together? So I'll give you an example also just to make sure that the, the healthcare people watching understand. So in mm -hmm. nursing, all our nursing books really never catered for Black people or people with the color mm. of my skin. So most of the literature in nursing was taught from a Western perspective, which you and I know that until the lion learns to write, the story will always glorify the hunter. Yeah, so the the hunter, books yes. are written from a Western perspective. It's no secret. But when we were going through nursing school, even assessing the skin, it talks about when a skin gets bruised, it goes from pink to yellow. Mm. No. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so you, you, you're you like, wait a minute, whose skin are we talking about? But that's what's yes. in the textbooks. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that there was a Nigerian young man who's actually written a book and defined, um, created a, a kind of a legend for medical and nursing schools now to follow for Black mm -hmm. skin. But at the time, 20 plus years ago, up to recently, there was nothing. So what I realized was the story that actually came up was one of the nurses was caring for a patient, a black nurse was caring for a patient. In fact, a black Somali nurse was taking care of a patient from up north in Minnesota. Mm. And she, you know, we always prepared when you go, you look in the chart, so there's a, the patient's document to make sure you understand. Let's pretend the patient's name is Mr. Beyond. You wanna make sure you know where they come from, what their needs are, what medications they're gonna have, what treatments they're gonna have, that's from nursing. But when you when you review that, it's to make sure when you go to care for them, you meet their needs or you're able to provide care because you're familiar with the person. Now, mm -hmm. noticing that the patient came from up north and a small town, she assumed that the majority of the patients there were Lutheran. Mm. And so when she went to care for the patient and the patient was very, very sick and the daughter was coming in to visit, she said, hey, by the way, at the hospital, we do offer chaplain services. Would you like someone for me to call someone for you? And the patient and the daughter mm. said, for oh, sure, we would love that. Instead of saying, who would you like? She went ahead and mm -hmm. it's the Lutheran chaplain who came to the room. And then the daughter goes, who is that? And who's what is he here for? Dad right. meets rabbi. Mm. So instead of, you know, <laughs> she was doing her best. The intent was good. She was being resourceful. She was being supportive. But just that missing to ask that one extra question, like, hey, Mr. Beyond, mm -hmm. we do have chaplaincy services. What is your preference? Would you like me to call a priest, um, a, a, a rabbi, an imam, or, or a Christian uh, pastor? Who would you like me to call? That would have saved all that drama and disappointment instead of saying, um, I'm just going to page who I think they should have. And often that's wow. cultural competency because cultural competency assumes like, 
all Africans, Collins and Lena and everybody else, they sound the same, they eat fufu and they just love this and they're loud. Whereas in reality that you and I are very different because we were raised in very mm -hmm. different environments, but even children of the same mother are very different because one could be religiously Muslim while the other one is Christian, while the other one is atheist. So it's always good to ask. So cultural humility is asking that one more question to find out what is it that somebody really needs and how can I better serve them? Wow. Wow, that's amazing. And that is education right there. That is enlightenment right there. It's things that most people and all of us take for granted because we like to assume. And unfortunately, they said assumption is the worst part of knowledge. So I'm happy that indeed leading with cultural humility is here to really pinpoint and highlight some of the things. And it's, at the end of the day, it actually goes a long way to create a better society for everybody because people will feel respected, people will feel heard, and people will feel understood. Thank you so very much, Lena, for coming up with the book. But of course, the next thing I would like to find out from you uh, is that what are some of the stories and feedback that people who have read the book shared with you? Because it's inspiring. I love the book. Uh, what are some of the uh, feedback and what are you learning along the way? Thank you. At first, a lot of people were like, what is that? But like you, once they get to understand what it is, because I told someone, I said, you know, as Christians, we are always taught, oh, treat people how you like to be treated. But in reality, mm. there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I said, if you treat people like that, that means if I like Ugali, then I'm going to make sure you get some Ugali. If I like, <laughs> if I like to travel or, you know, bungee jump or get out of planes and do whatever, then I'm going to want you to do that. So literally it mm. sounds very basic, but it's even inappropriate. So I mm -hmm. said, instead, instead of, you know, treating people how you would like to be treated, how about you ask people how they would like to be treated and then treat them as mm. such. So that is really the yeah, summary of my book. So instead of you mm -hmm. assuming what somebody likes or if that they're going to like what you like, how about you find out what they like, what their preferences, what they like to be called, what, you know, like it's easy for you to nickname a person if you can't pronounce your, their name. You've seen that a lot, especially mm -hmm. in the United States. But it's always nice. If you can pronounce a difficult name of somebody else, you can definitely mm -hmm. learn somebody else's name. It's, a, it's an effort. It's a courtesy. And like you called it, it's a respect just to show that you care enough Absolutely. to see me for who I am. So yes, I, wow. my book has had very positive reviews. I'm sure you, as one of someone who's my friend on Facebook, you've seen a lot of people. Oh, yes. Post pictures, I have. I have. Um, in the hundreds, um, which is pretty exciting. I was looking at numbers, Collins, on um, people talking about data, like authors. So apparently, mm -hmm. in a, an average author sells 250 books in a lifetime. I did that in four oh, days. Wow. I did wow. that in four days. Yeah, so and you I've, did I've that really, in four days. Yeah, so I've really been blessed. I sold over 300 copies in four days. I had bulk orders. That's and amazing. Everything. But my book is also a workshop book. So it's really good mm -hmm. for uh, corporate organizations, higher education, anywhere there's leadership, uh, hospitals, Anywhere where they can use it for workshop training to manage biases, mm -hmm. you know, to recognize privilege. There's a whole chapter in there about privilege um, and really practices that are inclusive. So people are seen, mm -hmm. heard and valued. Wow, indeed. So that people are seen, heard and valued. If you are joining us and you're wondering how you can get a book, we're going to share more information about how you can get a book. We have a comment coming in from Annie Imwa. It says, wow, learning moments for me. Treat people as they would like to be treated, not as you would like to be treated. Thank you so very much uh, for the comments. If you also have any comments or question or feedback for this broadcast, you are more than welcome to share with us and we'll be more than willing to read it live on the program. Uh, Lena, the next part we'd like to talk about uh, is you, you, you suddenly have a lot going on, like right? your book, uh, starting a new business, and now uh, you're also about to deliver the maiden or the inaugural entrepreneurship and leadership conference. Uh, why is this conference important uh, currently? So you and most people knew me, actually, I know you and I have had this conversation, but a lot of you know me as the nurse or so the award-winning nurse because you've been to different mm -hmm. events where I've spoken or been awarded or done community work. I love the community. I love the immigrant community, especially in the sweet cities, because I feel like our challenges are different. Going back to cultural humility, 
whether you know mm -hmm. I mean, there's always racism and there's always different things that are impending or that affect how we navigate the system but then you take it a step further as an immigrant there's accent bias and a new system and a new strategies and learning all of that and trying to maybe even separate it from your family back home and trying to adjust with children here it's a lot of different obstacles that we have to overcome to get to where we are and so a lot of you know me as a public health nurse because i've done community forums but Mm -hmm. Recently, a few years ago, I went into the financial education world. So I became an entrepreneur wow. in the life insurance business. So that has been really mind opening for me to recognize that, you know, someone asked a very interesting question in a different conference where they said, have you ever seen a millionaire become a millionaire from punching in? Mm. And that threw me yeah. off because I was like, oh, my goodness, I never even thought about that. So I realized that there's a lot of ways that small businesses or business owners uh, benefit in the American system. The, the American mm -hmm. tax system loves small businesses because they're the ones who create employment, but also resources for the community. So I thought about right. it and I'm like, wow, I can do this. But even going to that life insurance space, I realized it was a gap especially in the immigrant mm -hmm. community, bringing education to teach us on generational wealth, bringing education to teach us on protecting our income, bringing education to teach us on building our children so they can start at a better place than we did. But even so, mm -hmm. finding resources we can use good to while we are living more than when we are dead, because we, we live longer than mm -hmm. we die. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So then people are not losing their houses when they die or because they didn't have a mortgage, but having resources in place to cushion that and protect it so that it's transferred from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? When you look at the wealth gaps in the United States, the numbers mm -hmm. show, they, the latest numbers, the economists say that to every white family, they have $171,000 versus a black mm. family at 17,000. Wow, now, what a you gap. Look, you're like, is that a mistake or is that a number? It's actually a number, mm. 17,000. And if you read that report further, it will tell you that the economists are citing it to inheritance, lack of inheritance by black families. We don't leave anything for our children. We leave debt. So I mm. found this tool, and as a public health nurse, it aligned beautifully to what I was talking about, health gaps and wealth gaps. Now people mm -hmm. can actually leverage insurance for very little dollars every month. They can actually leave millions for their families. Mm -hmm. For every little dollars every month, they can protect their income. That 100,000 that RNs are making, that 200,000 the doctors are making, they can cushion that with insurance so that in case they get an injury or an accident or a disease and they're not dead, they're covered. Going back to entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. why? Because I realized it gives me freedom. I was working mm. 12 hours at the hospital, even as a nurse leader. And then I, when I started the entrepreneurship business, I was working two to four hours making the same amount of money. Within six months, I'm good. I made my wow. six figures in eight months. That, man, you, 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 actually, you actually set up early, but that may not be the reality with, for everyone, right? And those are the reasons why you asked me, why are you starting the entrepreneurship conference? Because there are business people who did what I did and never made anything mm -hmm. or made zero or went mm -hmm. to the negative. And there are business people who started a business and are in the millions. So I might be average, mm -hmm. I might be successful, but there's somebody else who's doing amazingly well. And so mm -hmm. for me, for the love of the community or you, let's Africa, let's talk. The reason you do what you do is to disseminate information and those who apply that information benefit. Because the information Absolutely. is not powerful until it's applied. Yes. So I want to say that the entrepreneurship conference is a vision that came to me or an idea that is now becoming really powerful and everybody's going to be mm -hmm. there on March 18th. But it was a place of, I thought, wait a minute, how is it that we can close the wealth gaps in our communities if we are not educating them that you can't just live by punching in? You got to find another side hustle or a small business that allows you those tax write-offs so you can keep the money in your family and not just pay it off to Uncle Sam. So I'm hoping that everybody's going to, those who are aspiring to start businesses, to be entrepreneurs, those who had a little itch and don't know where to start, come on out, learn from those who have been successful. Those who've done it and failed, like my brother said, like not everybody has that reality. 
come and learn from those who've made mistakes so you can avoid those mistakes and see how better can you build yourself. Those who have also been very successful are willing to come share with you. So it's a networking opportunity for all of us. So it's a great way to connect with people. Like if you want media and you want someone to record or market your work or you're a business owner who's not out there and want to create brand visibility, do you are you aware of Beyond Media? That there is something called Beyond Media in our community that actually mm -hmm. does marketing, website building, that can actually brand something. And guess what? They can also do your interviews <laughs> and put everything out there because without being present in social media today, you're as good as shop is closed. You mm -hmm. might as well just open up and be out there. And I wanted to shout out that because that is the work like Collins does every day and doing these interviews and help interviewing people and highlighting our work. Sometimes it's easy to forget yourself. So Beyond Media is, Mr. Collins is the CEO. Absolutely. So if, you, if you need services, reach out to me. I'm the manager. I'll hook you up. Thank you. You are on board. And, and thanks so much for, for highlighting our work. And indeed, because sometimes, like you said, we can forget ourselves and the impact that we are making. But thank you so very much. And I appreciate you highlighting my business and even most importantly, uh, explaining why it's so important currently for people to be part of the upcoming inaugural entrepreneurship leadership conference. Like you mentioned, there is a way that other businesses have made and succeeded. We don't want to be part of the numbers or the, yeah, the numbers of, oh, this amount of percentage of people takes like four years before they can succeed. If there's a knowledge that we can all apply to really set and get off early enough and be successful enough, I believe is the right thing to do. And that is why the Inaugural Entrepreneurship Leadership Conference is so very, very, very important. Of course, we'd like to also find out from you that uh, what caliber of entrepreneurs or people is this conference designed for? You talked about part of that and what can one expect when they attend this conference because it's new uh, yes. people probably haven't attended such a conference so we'd like to know about expectations and speaking of which on international women's day the numbers that came out of the research the public health numbers show that women we are outliving our men by five to ten years you are you are so you better get insurance <laughs> on that man to make sure that you are not left with the children with nothing so if you need life insurance, I will teach you, I will show you. There are so many uses of it, but that's just one piece because insurance relies on the medical community numbers to determine mortality mm. risk, but also to determine the cost of your insurance. So that's why I threw that out there. But you asked me who mm -hmm. is invited or who is this conference for? Number one, mm -hmm. if anybody who aspires to be a business owner or who's curious to know how did people become millionaires, there's going to be immigrant millionaires with an accent like yours and mine who've actually succeeded mm -hmm. in the system so that tells you that's a, one beautiful thing i love about america there's opportunities everywhere if you're willing and determined to seek and really be passionate about what you do you can be successful are there obstacles yes, yes of course are there you know inequitable things yes is funding difficult yes but at the conference we're gonna have People talking about funding. Uh, we've had one of our big sponsors, Old National Bank, is our old Old National Bank. Yes, they've actually mm -hmm. offered. They're willing to support immigrant communities looking for funding, whether you're looking for accounts wow. and things like that. And that's really my goal is to partner with these big corporations to recognize that as African immigrants, we may have started late in the game, 10, 20, 30 years mm -hmm. late. But guess what? We are here to build and we are willing to grow. So if you're one of those people coming out, number two, if you're those nurses that have been burnt out at the bedside and you're wondering, what can I do? You don't just have to learn about life insurance from Lena. Come learn about home care. Come learn about staffing. Come learn about uh, digital marketing uh, beyond and uh, my own are going to be there that are doing this work already. Mm -hmm. Come learn about IT or software marketing. One of the speakers has Clients is Walmart and Target and all these things. And she's just a, a, a she used to be a nurse before she went into that. Wow. You think about all the people who've had, you know, multiple seven figures, or I should say, you know, making a lot of money from starting home care agencies or staffing or um, tax strategy. Come learn why it's important to have a tax um, accounting 
and, and tracking things in your business. So the people there can be anywhere from starting out business people mm -hmm. thinking about starting or successful business owners looking to network. There's a great book that I wow. read uh, recently called Who Not How. Mm. That book is so powerful because if I need to do marketing for my business, if I need to do videography for my event, I don't mm -hmm. have to go to school to learn about videography. Mm -hmm. When I know I can call, call sure. you and say, hey, brother, do you got your stuff? Are you available this day? Can you do this for me? Who, not mm -hmm. how. And then we talk yeah. about it and see how we can work together. If Collins needs someone to speak at his event or maybe co collaborate about an event that he's doing, he just have to call, hey, Lena, do you have time to do this event strategy for me? He doesn't have to go learn and yes. bigger. oh, how much do I need to do for decorations? Or where, mm -hmm. where is the <laughs> you know, it's a, it's Number one, it saves time. You avoid mistakes. Mm -hmm. And you learn from those who have succeeded. And for me, as an African, I'll remind you once again, the wisdom that comes from the great Proverbs. When you set out on a journey, whether it's a business school or whatever, do not seek directions from someone who's never left home. Mm. You cannot learn how to get a degree from someone who's never had one. You can never mm -hmm. learn how to be a successful business owner from someone who's never succeeded. You cannot mm. learn how to do to manipulate these media stuff that we are looking at here if you don't talk mm -hmm. to Collins. Basically, learn from those who've succeeded. So you, your journey of learning is very short. So that way you get things wow. done. That is a track load of wisdom. Indeed, a few comments that came in earlier. Doreen, or Rico, <laughs> I hope I got the name correct. Says, Lena, I love you. I Thank love you, you back, Doreen. <laughs> And uh, Javi says, love this. Hey, indeed. family, love and, you. Uh, and in why it comes in again, it says, great information. That's Thanks, a Lena, great real estate entrepreneur, Miss Anne Moy. She's a great entrepreneur. And that's one person who's gone from four jobs in America with little ones to being a millionaire today, selling real estate to the diasporians. So I'm proud of her. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. And indeed, these are some of the successful stories that we would like to are uh, here and again be part of and it this you can it can happen to anyone and i'm happy that you are actually making this great effort to organize the inaugural entrepreneurship leadership conference to help people because we are not staying in the dark trying to figure things out by ourselves and it's so difficult when you're trying to do something you have no idea how to do it but here are people who have succeeded along the way and they are ready to tell you and and of course teach you the way so thank you so very much for this conference uh if uh, I know tickets are running and running and running, but if tickets are still available for individuals who would like to participate, how do they get access to tickets? Awesome. So there, there is tickets available still. Um, if you go to, uh, what is it called? Beat.ly. Let me see if I can think of it. Bold events. Yes, that's that's where it is. Um I have shared the link there if you want to post it. it. But I was going to say, oh, okay. if you want, you can visit our website, Bold Impact Group. But the easiest way is www.bit.ly slash bold events mm -hmm. two. Now, okay. for the local people, because we are talking about cultural humility, you and I know what that means. Mm -hmm. I was telling, I was speaking at a conference a few years back with the Minnesota Nurses Association. And I told them that, has anybody ever used MoneyGram? or Western Union, and of course, there was like one or two hands up. But you and I know what MoneyGram and Western Union and SendWave and, and all these other tools are because we have family back home, and as Africans, we believe in community. And that is really why we are doing even the entrepreneurship event is because we believe in community and uplifting our community so that we can go far together. So one thing that I will tell you, is that for tickets, you can use Cash App as well. Um, they can cash mm -hmm. me up or cash up Jackie, and I can post the number here. The easiest way mm -hmm. probably is if, if I post my um, my Cash App number, which is my first name yep. and my mm -hmm. last initial, and then the area code 763, which is the city. Um, oh, okay. That, that's another opportunity for those who are willing to pay, but as long as you post your name in the memo, then we know who you are um, for the event. Tickets are $100. That includes your three-course dinner. And of course, um, your entertainment will have a DJ and some African dancers in the audience. So you know, wow. African, we must have food and entertainment when we are learning. So it's 
edutainment is not just education it's edutainment you're mm -hmm. going to be educated educated yeah. and entertained at the same time no it's great it's great because i've attended workshops then conferences and like eight hours all talk and like oh, i think my head is about to blow no so not yeah I'm, I'm excited i'm a, yes yes all right so if, you, if you're watching uh, you can see that uh, indeed the cash up handle is right on the dollar sign lena and 763 so you can actually copy that send that's money and it's 100 dollars. okay because uh, let me go back to uh the screen and again we'll be ending the conversation very soon uh so yeah you can either click on general admission vip tickets hotel reservations for people who are coming outside of minnesota and again because it's actually a weekend if you live in minnesota i would think that you want to take the opportunity to get a hotel uh, and uh, just have fun. Go check in on Friday, get ready for the conference on Saturday and hang out for networking and drinks and some food again at the end of the conference and check out Sunday. I think it's actually a good plan so that you yeah. can take like a mini vacation, enjoying learning. And I think it's really cool for people to do that. So yeah, um, you can also check it out. Uh, the sponsorship you would like to sponsor. Of course, it's less than two weeks away, but we would still appreciate any sponsorship that will be uh, for the program. So yeah, um, before I would let you go, I would like to know if you have any concluding remarks and uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. So that's exciting. And thank you for having me and of course sharing about this information. Uh, one thing I will say is I want to highlight all the business owners that are willing to come and share their wisdom um, on that day because they are willing to grow. Like, again, you know, I'm going to throw an African proverb right there to say, you know what? Um, <laughs> if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, mm -hmm. go together. We are going together yes. very far because they've already, there's uh Legal, uh, Matt, he's going to be talking about a trust versus a will. If you died today, God forbid, is your, does your house go to the government or does it go to your children? You know, do you need a mm. will or do you need a trust? If you have a small business like Beyond Media, do you need to put that away for the children or do you want to leave that for the government to fight with them when you're gone? Things mm. like that are important for us to have those discussions. And guess what? If you don't know, you can't use it. But once you know, you can mm -hmm. apply it and it benefits you and your generations. Uh, we'll have people talking about product um, innovation or education consultants. And, you know, for me, I do speaking, paid speaking. I will share a little bit about my book and how to publish a book. A lot of people have been wanting to write a book and they don't know how. I can share what I've learned. But in the end, what I want to also encourage our people is that don't be intimidated by hearing millionaires or multiple six-figure earners at the conference. It is for you. Starting mm -hmm. from anywhere, we were talking about embracing equity, going back to the subject of today. It's really acknowledging and being aware where you are and willing to learn from those who are a few steps ahead so you can also bring somebody along. So invite someone to wow. come there. And then also another piece that is important is a lot of our small businesses have supported us. So we are looking for big, uh, eventually we want to grow it, maybe God willing next year to involve other corporations with more time. But for today, you'll be surprised that a lot of our small business, um, small business owners in our community are excited and partnered and you will be seeing a lot of sponsors on the website and a lot of them in the program. And those are some of the blessings that I, I feel like God was really pushing this vision and it, the time is ripe mm -hmm. and right. So. I want to wow. thank Collins. I want to thank God for this opportunity. I want to celebrate Absolutely. all the women doing amazing and all the men supporting the women across the world because we do need each other in order to grow. And then, of course, I want to invite everybody. If you want to get my book, uh, feel free. And by the way, at the conference, everybody's going home with a free copy of my book. Oh, so wow. I've got, uh, That's amazing. I've thought to sponsor um, all hundreds of you coming out. Um, there's a few more tickets left, and I'm excited about that. And it's actually going to be more of a Pan-African space because there's countries from all mm. over Africa and Americans and everybody um, involved. So once wow. again, I'm grateful. And thank you for everyone who tuned in to watch us. Time flew by, Collins and I thought we were going to do this for 15 minutes. <laughs> we are approaching an hour because that's how passionate this conversation has turned out. But again, those who joined us, definitely your time is a gift to us. God bless you. Hopefully you can apply Absolutely. some nuggets and be blessed. Indeed, indeed. I know everyone is going to apply some nuggets. And what I would like to encourage everyone is to share the video 
And uh, Senate, this is actually a lot of great information, Senate out there. And most importantly, share the flyer for the upcoming conference, specifically call at least three people and tell them about it and invite them to be part of this conference. I cannot thank you enough, Lena, for your time, uh, for sharing this moment with us, especially on International Women's Day, and also sharing this great conversation with us. We truly appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You are very welcome. All right. Once again, this has been African Let's Talk. My name is Collins Kofi Opo, and uh, we've been talking to Alina. She is an amazing person in our community who is championing a lot of positive uh, things going on. And most importantly, she has come up with a book, Leading with Cultural Humility. And again, there is an upcoming entrepreneurship conference for businesses and, of course, entrepreneurs, uh, established ones and incoming or upcoming ones. You have to be part of this to learn and find out how you can actually break through with a lot of successes for your business. My name is Collins Kofi. Upon to the production team here. Thank you so very much for being part of the program. Have a good evening. Ha!